Hi, I'm Tia Marsili, Director of Trusts at the Arc of Northern Virginia, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Special Needs Trust Program at the Arc, as well as Special Needs Trusts in general. I'm not an attorney and I'm not giving any legal advice. I'm speaking to you from experience and what I've learned from attorneys with whom I work and from my life as a mother of two children with disabilities. The name of the presentation is The Role of the Special Needs Trust When Planning for the Future. So we'll be talking about who we are, what government benefits are, why plan and special needs trusts. Some of the questions we'll answer are how can someone leave money to an individual with disabilities without jeopardizing their government benefits? How can an individual accumulate more than $2,000 and not lose government benefits? Who will manage their money? What is a trust? And how can you guarantee that funds will be available once the parents are gone? So who is the Ark of Northern Virginia? The Ark of Northern Virginia is a nonprofit organization. It's one of over 700 chapters of ARCs in the United States. And there's a national ARC in Washington, D.C. And we all follow the same vision and mission statements. Each ARC then develops its services based on the membership's needs. Our ARC uh, serves Northern Virginia. The Special Needs Trust serves Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. primarily. We're a one-stop shop. We provide information and referral, educational seminars, waiver management, and the Special Needs Trust Program. The experts in the field are friends of ours. We collaborate largely with other groups in the area and in the other states. And if we don't have the answers on hand, then we do know the people that have them and we refer them. Now let's get started with the presentation. There are six things to consider when planning for the future. The letter of intent, legal authority, government benefits, estate planning, special needs trust, and financial planning. The letter of intent is a document, a guidance document, that outlines a person's needs, their financial needs, legal needs, and how you'd like the person to be treated whenever you're gone and what situation should be put into place in order to help them. That's a major document that every parent should create and it will be revised regularly. Government benefits are things such as supplemental security income, Medicaid, Medicaid waivers, food assistance, and energy assist assistance. There are two types of Medicaid. There's state plan Medicaid and long-term care Medicaid. Eligibility is primarily for individuals falling into particular categories such as low income, children, pregnant women, the elderly, persons with disabilities, and parents meeting specific income thresholds. Medicaid waivers fall under long-term care. The other type of government benefit that plays a very strong role with special needs trust is supplemental security income. It ba pays benefits based on financial need. It's meant to provide for food and shelter. Both Medicaid, Medicaid waivers, and supplemental security income are means tested. What does that mean? It means that there's eligibility criteria and a person who is receiving these benefits should have less than $2,000 in assets or resources. For couples, it's less than $3,000. And it's income tested, someone between 0 and 18, it's based on the parent's income and resources. Over 18, it's based on the income of the person with disabilities, unless it's a Medicaid waiver and then it's based on the individual themselves. And I'm telling you these things because they all play a role in the special needs trust arena. There's another type of benefit that is not means tested. It's Social Security Disability Insurance, and it's an earned benefit, and we have many clients who have SSDI, as it's called, and Medicare. They've earned the income towards this Social Security benefit, or their parents have, and it is not means tested. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Another part in the future planning and when thinking about special needs trust is estate planning. What are your family's financial goals, and how do you want assets distributed after you die? You need to think about your last will and testament, beneficiary designation, special needs trust, legal authority, and a letter of intent. 
There are three common mistakes that families make during the estate planning process. One is bequeathing assets directly to the child from a parent, grandparent, or other relative. If it's more than $2,000, you've jeopardized the individual's government benefits. The other is designating the individual as a beneficiary on life insurance policies, IRAs, and other retirements or annuities that would potentially also jeopardize the person's government benefits. The third mistake is disinheriting the individual with disabilities and leaving the money to someone else in the hope that that person will take care of the individual with disabilities using that money. It's not a safe choice because that person who has the money for the person with disabilities could potentially lose it all. It could be taken from them. Anything could happen and the money is not the person with disabilities money anymore. So what is a special needs trust? When a special needs trust is written properly, all government benefits stay intact. A person with disabilities can indirectly through the special needs trust receive a portion of the estate. A special needs trust is designed to provide benefit to and protect the assets of a person with a disability and still allow the individual to be qualified for and receive government benefits. That's the most important thing to remember here. The special needs trust is an ethical vehicle that can be used to set aside money for a person with disabilities so that they can maintain their government benefits. Special needs trusts are also used by individuals receiving Social Security Disability Insurance and Medicare. When they need help managing their money, they use a special needs trust, park their money there, and then we help them with the money management. Parents have also been known to establish special needs trusts for their children and adult children who are working and doing fine right now, but the assumption is that potentially this disorder may be degenerative and they will need to apply for government benefits in the future. And so the family plans ahead and puts the money or will be directing the money to a special needs trust. So to recap, what's the purpose of a special needs trust? It's to provide a manager to administer the trust for a beneficiary who may have needs arise that cannot otherwise be met by the, beneficiary, by the beneficiary's personal resources or benefits. It's also used to promote the dignity, comfort, and happiness by providing supplemental care and treatment not otherwise covered. Who is eligible for a special needs trust? Anyone with a physical, mental, or intellectual disability as defined by the Social Security Act. Social Security Administration has def several definitions that are available online that you can look at. You can contact us at any time also to speak about the different disabilities, but basically you have to qualify under that definition. The elderly may also establish them. They could potentially be family funded trust for an elderly person. And the third option is for those people receiving Medicaid or disability insurance. So what can a, a special needs trust pay for and how can the funds be used? It can be used for dental care, veterinary bills, pre-need burial, education, clothing, it can basically be used for anything that supplemental security income and Medicaid doesn't cover. It's to supplement government benefits. It does not supplant them. The individual establishing the special needs trust determines how the funds will be used. And that's written into the letter of intent as a form of directions and it's our guidance when dispersing. So there's some startling statistics. Some 62% of parents have no long-term care plan in place. And of those parents who did plan, half of them have either left the money directly to the individual with disabilities or planned improperly. In both of these scenarios, they would disqualify their children from government benefits. There are two types of special needs trusts that we'll review today. One is third-party trusts. The other is first-party trusts. The family funded or third party trusts can be funded or unfunded. Those are established by the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, anyone but the individual with disabilities. They're established during the estate planning process, either with a private attorney or a special needs trust can be established directly with an authorized nonprofit organization like the Ark of Northern Virginia. 
our attorneys have already created the documents and templates. They've been reviewed and approved both in Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., and the families come directly to the ARC, meet with me, and we establish the trust together. That document is then taken to your private attorney who will help you with writing your will, power of attorney, and other forms of legal documents. A third-party trust avoid pr avoids probate to have funds available immediately. It's there and the money is ready for the individual with disabilities so when the need arises it can be used to support and supplement that individual as long as it's not supplanting those government benefits they're receiving and it can be funded during one's lifetime or funded whenever the parents pass away. So how do families fund special needs trust? As a mother of two children with disabilities I know how costly it is to raise our children and it's not that we have a lot of discretionary funds lying around. Parents oftentimes choose to purchase life insurance policies naming the special needs trust as the beneficiary for the individual with disabilities. Also using savings and investments, gifts and assistance, inheritance from other other family members and friends or property. These funds are used to fund the special needs trust that's a family funded for the benefit of the individual. The money are, is never left directly to the person with disabilities. Third party trusts, funded or unfunded also is part of a pooled trust program. For example, as I mentioned, you can come straight to the Ark of Northern Virginia and we go through the documents together. We also provide consultation in advance of that. Our job is to provide you with the information so that you make an informed choice whether you wish to have a private trust established with an attorney or a trust established with an authorized nonprofit. That's up to you but you need to know your options and choose what's best for your family. The remainderman in a family funded or third party special needs trust is determined by the person establishing the trust. That means that the, if there are any funds left in the trust when the individual with disabilities passes away the parents or the grantors whomever established the trust will determine who is to inherit that money. First party or self-funded trusts. This is the other form of special needs trusts. Self-funded trusts are established usually if there's been a structured settlement, an inheritance that's gone directly to an individual with disabilities, or a lump sum payback from Social Security. So this is a scenarios that are not planned and in these cases the individual with disabilities can come directly to the Ark of Northern Virginia and establish the special needs trust. It's an ethical move of the money that's accepted by Social Security and it protects their government assets while giving them a money from which they can pay the bills as they their bills as they occur. The difference between the third party and this first party self-funded trust is that when the beneficiary passes away federal statute has a Medicaid payback clause in it. That means that if you establish this type of self-funded special needs trust when the beneficiary passes away what's left in the trust either goes back to Medicaid or left to the nonprofit organization. So there's a chart that shows the difference between the private first party special needs trust that may be established with an attorney or a first party self-funded trust that is a pool trust established with the Ark of Northern Virginia. The difference being is that who can establish it. It can maybe be established by a parent or guardian if it's a private trust but with whenever an individual with disabilities wishes to establish that trust they must go to a, a nonprofit organization to do that that's authorized to manage it. It's funded by the individual in both cases. It's for the sole benefit of the individual either with a self-funded it's established by a private attorney or a financial institution or as I mentioned if you come to the Ark of Northern Virginia we have a master agreement, a joinder agreement and the individual with disabilities establishes it directly with us. The ARC Trust and Remainders. So there are two types of trusts. Third party or family funded trusts, first party or self-funded trusts. I'm going to review the difference between the remainderman beneficiaries. This is important to do because people often confuse this. 
when there's a family funded trust, whoever established the trust determines what is to happen to the remainder left in the trust when the individual with disabilities passes away. So they determine who inherits. With the self-funded or first party trust, there's something called a Medicaid payback. So if you've established the trust through a, a private attorney, there's an automatic Medicaid payback. If you've established the first party or self-funded trust through an authorized nonprofit, the nonprofit gives you the option of either paying back Medicaid or leaving the remainder to the organization to help continue running the program and for the benefit of other people in the trust program. So those are, we keep that in mind as we move forward in this process. So what exactly is a pooled special needs trust? And pooled is also something that confuses people, hence this slide. There's federal statute that defines the pooled special needs trust. You can read it, read all about it if you'd like. A trust is established with and managed by an authorized nonprofit when it's pooled. Each person has their own tax ID number, sub-account number, and their separate account reporting and tax reporting. So that means that if you have $5,000, $50,000, or $100,000 in the trust at the beginning of the day, the money is invested by the trustee and the returns go back into each individual account based on whether you started with $10,000 $50,000 or $100,000. The funds are pooled together for investment and fee purposes. Why a pooled special needs trust? It's managed by an authorized nonprofit organization. The Ark of Northern Virginia's trust is unique in that we were a nonprofit advocating for the civil rights of people with disabilities long before we chose to manage a special needs trust program. So we have a solid basis in the area of disabilities and a strong knowledge basis. And people come to us asking us questions across the lifespan. So you have a good resource to get your questions answered. You have a professional trustee. In our situation, it is SunTrust Bank that is our trustee. They take on the fiduciary responsibility. So where the ARC is the expert in the area of disabilities, SunTrust is the expert in the area of finances. There's no minimum and no maximum. Many financial institutions have a minimum. We have none. So you can start a special needs trust with a very low amount of money to get it established. A special needs trust is an ethical vehicle to set aside money for someone with disabilities while maintaining government benefits. It's an ethical vehicle. You can do this. Social Security has seen our documents. Medicaid, medical assistance has seen our documents also. And those not receiving means-based benefits may still need help with paying bills. And we're there to help you with your money management and budgeting. So how does a pooled trust work? In our situation, we have a beneficiary, a grantor, the primary representatives, a trust manager, and the trustee. The beneficiary is the person with disabilities. The grantor is the person or people establishing the trust. That could also be a person with disabilities if it's the self-funded trust. Primary representatives are the people who may make disbursement requests from the trust. And the grantor, the person establishing the trust, determines who those people or organizations are going to be. The ARC is the manager and SunTrust is the trustee. So I have five case studies. You'll see on the slides, they're very detailed. I'll just go through them in brief. This is to give you an idea of the different types of people who come to the Ark of Northern Virginia in order to establish a special needs trust. Case one, parents with a 10 month old. So these parents came to us, their child has a genetic disorder and they've decided to start the estate planning process. They established a special needs trust with us. They want us to be the ones managing the trust. They want us to take on the role of their uh, counselor, so to speak, and they're coming to us and asking us for advice. And they're asking their families. They funded it with a minimal amount, and they're sending out letters to their family members, friends, relatives, and saying, if you'd like to give our child a gift, instead of sending them toys or a check, please make contributions to her special needs trust. And in the future, they plan on funding it 
through their last will and testament, but right now they're doing it as a mode of um, saving up for her future. Case two is a teenage auto accident victim. The attorneys inform the victim and her parents that she'll soon receive a structured settlement. They come to the Ark of Northern Virginia and establish a special needs trust, a self-funded special needs trust on this person's behalf because the money is going straight to the individual. The individual has or plans on applying for supplemental security income at 18 years and one month and so she cannot have assets in her name. And so they establish the self-funded trust and the structured settlement check goes straight into the special needs trust. The person can then apply for the means-tested government benefits and maintain them. The parents in this situation are postponing the establishment of a family-funded trust. Right now they're dealing with the automobile accident and changes in their lives and their daughter's life. life. The third case is a 17-year-old with a developmental disability. As this young man approaches 18, they realize that before they can apply for supplemental security income and Medicaid for him, that he has assets in his name. He has a savings account and government bonds or savings bonds. And so with him, they come to the Ark of Northern Virginia and establish a special needs trust. It's the self-funded trust since it's his money. At the same time, they choose to establish a family-funded trust with the Ark of Northern Virginia. The enrollment fee for the second trust is half as much because it's a second trust for the same individual. Many people have more than one special needs trust. They are planning on applying for supplemental security income as soon as he turns 18 years old in one month. So we are now managing both of the trusts for this individual. Case four is a single unemployed woman with social security disability insurance. This woman has a history of mental health issues and the family has been there to help provide for her in many ways for many years. They came to the Ark of Northern Virginia and have established a family funded trust that they've now funded. And they have written a letter of intent and have given us direction as to how the trust money can be used. The individual with disabilities is a primary representative so she can make requests out of the trust but they, we're abiding by the letter of intent and the plan that they have given us. They have set restrictions on the use of the trust money. It's for medical use, dental, and transportation, for example. And so we're helping the family and we're helping this individual. The family is stepping back and out of the picture and we're helping the person with disabilities work more with us and become more independent. The last case is a middle-aged man with an intellectual disability and supplemental security income. This man has learned that his dad, when he passes away, plans on leaving money directly to him. Now had the father planned in advance, he could have established a family-funded trust and left it there and he would have not put his son into this position. But as we know, as we age, we become a little more set in our ways and sometimes it's not so easy to convince our parents to change their estate plans. But this individual had learned about our special needs trust program and he came to us to establish the self-funded special needs trust planning for the inheritance that he's going to receive because he doesn't want to jeopardize his own government benefits. He advocated on his own behalf and we were there to help him through the process. And we'll also help him through the process once it's established and funded when it comes to paying bills, contacting therapists, dentists, and other individuals and service providers in this person's life. So we're there to guide the family as well as the person with disabilities and community service providers. Our program design provides two levels of management, the Ark of Northern Virginia as well as SunTrust. We do the day-to-day -day client relations and SunTrust Bank is responsible for, as I mentioned, the financial portion of it. The money is invested by SunTrust's private wealth management team. There's an efficiency in transactions and there are reduced fees. We've been working with individuals with disabilities for over 50 years. We have the knowledge, expertise, and sensitivity it takes to work with people with disabilities and their families. We have excellent client relations and customer service. 
Our trust program has been in existence for over 13 years. We currently manage over 285 active trusts with another 60 unfunded family funded trusts and the pooled trust has approximately $10.5 million in it to date. I talked about the Arc of Northern Virginia's role as the manager. What's the role of SunTrust Bank as the trustee? They're responsible for asset management, account reporting, account administration, tax reporting, and check writing and dispersing. A trustee, whether you have a private trust or you have a trust with a nonprofit, has fiduciary responsibilities and these are listed here. So either you, if you choose the private route, you need to identify someone who can be the trustee of the trust and take on these responsibilities, or you can unburden your family member and come to the Ark of Northern Virginia and allow us in our partnership with SunTrust to take on those responsibilities. And that frees up the family members to continue being family and having fun together. And it doesn't make them the keeper of the money. The family can still be actively involved as primary representatives, and as long as the grantors are alive, they can amend and change the trust documents. The management of the individual's accounts. I touched on this briefly before. Each account is assigned a separate tax ID number. There's individual account and tax reporting. Each sub-account has an individualized portfolio allocation. It's a mix of stocks and bonds and treasury bills, and any time a client does not wish to participate in the balanced account that is the default program, so to speak, they can speak to SunTrust Bank directly to our client advisor and choose among the five portfolios that SunTrust's private wealth management team offers our clients. So you have access to investors who generally invest accounts of $1 million or more. So we have families, individuals that may only have $1,000 in their account or $5,000 in their account, and it's invested on their behalf by these professionals. So how do you access the funds in a special needs trust? It's simple. You need to fill out a disbursement request form. It must be signed by one of the primary representatives, and we always need supporting documentation. Supporting documentation would be a bill or an invoice or a receipt or a training invoice. A training invoice is what you get if you go to a furniture store, for example, and you find furniture you'd like to purchase, but you don't have the money in hand. An employee there can print out a training invoice. It basically is uh, the price of the product if you were to purchase it. You submit that to the Ark of Northern Virginia. Our trust associate verifies the information on the disbursement request form and brings it to me and I either approve or disapprove as the ARC has sole discretion. So we're making sure that the benefits are not being jeopardized by the individual. The legitimate is request. It's aligned with the letter of intent that the family has provided. And the primary representative is indeed someone who may sign that document and submit this request to us. Once it's been processed, at the ARC, the trust associate sends it to SunTrust Bank and the check is cut and dispersed that very same day. So we can be incredibly efficient as long as the supporting documentation and the disbursement request form are correct. This slide talks about things to keep in mind. Generally speaking, a special needs trust should not be paying for rent and utilities and groceries that's when the individual has supplemental security income. If you do use the trust for that purpose, it must be reported to Social Security and they may potentially reduce the SSI by one third. So it's important to keep in mind. The self-funded account holders should remember also that if they intend to use the special needs trust to pay for burial, funeral, or cremation, that should be done prior to their death. That means that you purchase pre-need irrevocable plans or irrevocable burial insurance because once the self-funded trust closes, you cannot get anything out of it. That's the difference between the self-funded and the family funded. The family funded can remain open after the death of the beneficiary to cover such expenses, but the self-funded closes upon the death of the beneficiary. Another thing to keep in mind is that the trust cannot hold loans. 
It cannot pay cash to the beneficiary if the beneficiary is a recipient of means-tested benefits. And the trust cannot make gifts or use the funds for other individuals. The trust is for the sole benefit of the person involved. Now, if it's a family-funded trust, there's a little bit more leeway there. But for self-funded trust, it is definitely for the sole benefit of the individual. So how much does it cost? The enrollment fee is $1,050. If you established a second trust for the individual with disabilities or for a sibling, it's $525. For an unfunded trust, that would be a family funded unfunded trust, there's a $65 annual renewal fee. That begins one year after the establishment of the trust. When the trust is funded, our current fees are 0.75% annually for management. That's drawn quarterly. So one quarter of 0.75. And the trustee's annual trustee fee is 0.9%, drawn monthly, or one twelfth of 0.9%. And upon the death of the beneficiary, or when the trust is depleted, there's a termination fee of $250. That can be taken directly out of the trust. That's it. One page of fees, no more. We turn the downsides up. We have family-friendly documents. It's an easy process. We have a one-time establishment fee, low annual administrative fees spread out among the pool, trust investments and tax returns are completed by SunTrust. It's managed by the Ark of Northern Virginia, and we provide continuity, reliability, and expertise. So what did you learn today? Background information about the Ark and some startling statistics. Means-tested benefits in brief, like SSI and Medicaid, Medicaid waivers. The difference between private special needs trusts and those established with a nonprofit. The importance of getting a special needs trust to protect an individual's benefits and plan for the future. You learned about the Arc of Northern Virginia's pooled special needs trust program. So now it's time to start planning. It's never too early. So the question is, should I plan ahead? So you have the choice to make. And here are three questions to ask yourself. Can my child be self-sufficient? Can my child manage his or her own money? And have I done everything possible to secure the continuation of the government programs? Ask yourself these three things. And then ask yourself, when establishing a special needs trust, do I want to establish it with a private attorney or a financial institution? and choose a trustee to take on that responsibility? Or do I want to go to the ARC of Northern Virginia and establish a special needs trust program that would be managed by the ARC where there are experts in the area of disabilities providing answers and overseeing the trust and being a contact person for your child with disabilities and other people that are in their lives with SunTrust managing it and investing the money. So what to do next? You may contact me at the Ark of Northern Virginia, preferably via email, to set up a consultation meeting. It's an hour meeting where I'm more than happy to talk to you about our program, special needs trusts in general, government benefits, and any other questions you may have regarding your child and planning for the future. When you walk away, you'll have hopefully sufficient information to make an informed decision. So remember, planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now.